Hello friends, this is Otstaba, and today I have a small piece of advice for you guys. You know the upcoming DLC for Dark Souls 3, Ashes of Irondale? Yeah. Do not watch the trailer for it. Just don't. If you haven't watched any trailers of it, good. Don't do it now. Just have some patience, you know you're gonna buy it anyway. If you've only watched the first one, then you're pretty lucky. Just don't watch the second one now. If you've watched both already, well, don't think too hard about what you've seen. And for the love of God, do not watch any other videos picking them apart or watch them again. Just try to forget them. So as we all know, opinions are a little bit like Carthus Corp swords. Everybody's got one, even if they don't show it straight away. So yes, my opinion might be different from yours, but I'm going to present you with some arguments, all of them based on my own personal experience, so that you can decide whether or not I'm right and if you want to listen to this advice. But before we do that, let me get into the topic itself. Why are trailers potentially bad for your experience? Okay, so let's imagine that this line on screen that you're seeing right now is a visual representation of the length of a movie, from the beginning until the end. Let's say that the movie is 100 minutes long, which is pretty standard. And the producers, they make a trailer, and the trailer is 5 minutes long. So if it's 5 minutes long, it's already like 1 20th of the film. But those 5 minutes, they're not usually taken from the beginning of the film, no. The trailers usually use the most exciting scenes. Sometimes these happen in the middle, or sometimes even by the end. So a normal trailer could look something like this. Some scenes taken from the beginning and throughout the film. Okay, but now we've got a problem. You see these scenes right here that we see in the trailer? They are very far into the movie. When you actually watch the movie, it's going to take a long time before you see these scenes. And this can be a problem. Let me give you an example. Let's imagine that you're watching a trailer for the Resident Evil movie that came out like 15 years ago. You know, that is pretty dope. It's, it's cool. But now if you watch the film, you're not gonna care very much about the black guy. If they're in a tight situation, you know exactly how he's going to die. So that element of surprise is completely gone. Before Dark Souls 3 was released, I was extremely excited to meet Yorm, the so-called reclusive lord of the profane capital. The trailers had depicted him waking up from his tomb and it just looks so fucking cool. And in the first gameplay reveal trailer, you could see this little clip right here. And my imagination was running absolutely wild. Look at it. It's like you're walking into a dark cave and maybe Yorm comes out of the darkness to ambush you and you have to run past him and... Uh, I was... In my mind, it was just perfect. So fast forward a few days and the game actually happens. I arrive to the profane capital. I curse a fog gate. Who would have guessed? It's Yorm. He's right there. Now he's standing up, and oh, I have to use a gimmick weapon to take him out. My expectations had been completely fucking shattered, and if that wasn't bad enough, the boss fight itself was a complete disappointment. So what was that a scene that I had seen in the trailer before? Yeah, it was just this giant from the Aerithil dungeon that I had just passed, I didn't even realize it. Completely unremarkable, but because of what I had watched, I had just been expecting something amazing that never happened. And this is only one boss. There are many other bosses featured in trailers. In fact, Dark Souls 3 has a total of 19 bosses before any DLC is released. How many of these do you think appeared in the trailers? Alright, some of them can be discarded outright because, you know, reasons. The Soul of Cinder, the final boss, obviously it's not gonna be in the trailer. They're not gonna do that. Fair enough, that one's out. Champion Gunder, it's a recycled boss, so it wouldn't make a lot of sense to put it in the trailer, so we can also discard that. But well, we still have 17 left. We could choose, you know, a few of these and make a really good trailer out of it. How many of them did they pick for the trailers? All of these. I'm not even joking. The trailers had footage of all three Lord of Cinder boss fights, the Twin Princess, and even the Nameless King himself. That is just insane. Oh, and during the editing of this video, I actually noticed that the Crystal Sage does appear, at least the one in the Grand Archives, and the Soul of Cinder is actually there as well. They actually did it, the absolute madman, they put the final boss in the trailer, well fucking done. And they even did something that they had done with Bloodborne already, which is to show the ending cutscene in one of the trailers. I know that these games don't have really exciting endings anyway, but... Seriously, the people who make these trailers just want to sell the game. They don't care about your experience, they don't care if they spoil anything, because once you buy their game, their job is done. Let's get back to the DLC itself. 
Recently, Miyazaki gave an interview where he shed some light on what's actually gonna be in the DLC. I'm not gonna tell you any details now because I don't want you to succumb to depression just yet, but let's just put it this way. The DLC is not gonna be huge, and there's not gonna be a lot of bosses. If you watch 7 minutes of gameplay or see one of the bosses, you're spoiling a relatively fucking huge amount of the content that you're gonna be playing in the DLC. If after hearing this, you still want to go ahead and watch it, well, don't let me stop you. Be my guest. Go watch it. Some people don't care about seeing bosses, and they just want to see them as soon as possible. I understand that. But if you want to get the full experience, I would recommend that you don't watch all the trailers. Watch the first one if you want to get a glimpse of it, and don't watch the second one. Same goes for the upcoming DLC that will come out after this one. I know that many of us watch the trailer not because we're interested in the gameplay, but rather because we want to know whether or not our lore theories turn out to be correct. If you don't want to watch the videos of Badibidia and have every little detail spoiled to you just to find out if your theory is true or not, don't worry, I've got your back. After conducting a long and arduous research, I have put together a complete infographic that will teach you everything you need to know about lore speculations about the DLC. Just head over to the description of this video and you will find it right there, no need to thank me. Huh? Is that... Is that you, Potokia? Dude, what... What are you doing here? Is something wrong? Oh no. You've watched the trailers already, haven't you? Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I tried to warn you in time, but... Uh, it's gonna be okay. I mean, you, you bought the season pass, right? You can always play the second DLC without having any spoilers for it. It's it's really gonna be okay. We just no no put put that bloodlust away. I know what you're thinking, but it's still not too late. You can. Wh where are you going? Listen, man. I know it's not what we were expecting, but when has From Software disappointed us with DLC? Dark Souls 2, Demon Souls, they were all great, right? Uh, it's not like they're gonna disappoint us this time. I'm, I am sure that the two bosses will actually be... You didn't know there were only two bosses, did you? <laughs>